Hey y'all, thanks so much for hopping on and joining me today. I am so excited for today's video and today's project because we are going to be doing a Christmas in July little series this month and it's starting with this video. I plan to do several more videos this month with our little Christmas in July craft series we're going to have going on. I'm super excited. I've got a lot of ideas and just not enough time. <laughs> so I'm hoping to just pack as much into this as I possibly can. And I hope that you all will join me and come along for this little Christmas in July journey that we're going to be having. I am calling it the cutest little country Christmas in July. <laughs> so we are going to... Um, I don't want to tell you too much. Um, I want you to be surprised a little bit, but this craft is so much fun and it is super cute. And I just can't wait to get started. So let's just go ahead and get going. All right, guys, for this cute little craft we're going to be doing, we need muslin cloth. I have mine here. I get it off of Amazon. Okay, so I'm just going to get it laid out how I need it here. Okay, we're actually going to be using our inkjet printer to print on our fabric and make a cute print for our um, Christmas in July series that we're doing. Okay, so I just have a standard piece of computer paper here I'm using just to cut my fabric to size. So all I'm doing is just laying this computer paper up here um, just so I can get my fabric cut the size that I need. So that's all I'm doing right here with this computer paper. And I'm probably, you know, going to have to go and trim, um, trim it up a little bit, but once I get this cut, and I guess you could use a little piece of tape just to tape your paper down so it's not moving all over the place when you're trying to cut. That was almost so I'm just gonna trim this up just so it because I won't you know I don't want any overhang it's got to fit see how that's overhanging there so I'm gonna trim that off it's got to fit perfect because we're tricking our printer into thinking that our fabric is going to be paper so it'll print on it <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna trim this up real quick all right so I got that I got my fabric um the size of my computer paper. So I'm gonna just put that to the side. Now we're going to take our freezer paper. You can pick this up from your local grocery store, but you need freezer paper. Everywhere I you know, researched about this craft, um, freezer paper is the best because it has, one side is like a matte smooth finish, like this would be that side. And then the other side is like a shiny um, side. If you run your finger across it, you can just tell it's got a coating on it. And that coating is sort of like an adhesive type coating. When heated with our iron, it's going to cause that fabric to stick to it. And we're sticking our fabric to our freezer paper to run it through our printer just to keep, just it's sort of holding our fabric in place while it runs through the printer because we know that, you know, this fabric just on its own is lumpy and floppy and it's not stiff like paper. So that's what this wax paper is sort of doing. It's just holding it in place to run through that printer. So I'm just going to get a piece of my freezer paper. Well, that wasn't too good, too good of a tear there, but it's all right. And we're going to lay our fabric on here because, again, I need to cut this to, you know, fit my fabric because we want it that same size. So I'm just going to get 
get our, our freezer paper cut. The exact same size as our fabric. So we're just gonna line it up just as good as we can. Just hold it in place. And cut just right alongside of that fabric. And even if you, you know, snip a piece of that fabric off, it's it's not going to hurt it. It will be all right. Okay, so I'm just trim this edge just a little, it's better to nick it and have it just a tad too, you know, short than a tad too big. Because if it's just a tad too big, it's not that printer is not going to run it through, it's just got to be that precise size to go through that printer. Okay, so now, again, we want that shiny side, um, our fabric on that shiny side. So I'm laying our fabric down on that glossy, shiny side. Okay, and you want to line it up because once we start ironing it on, it's going to stick. It's going to adhere itself to that freezer paper. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the fabric side real quick just to smooth out our fabric and get out any little wrinkles we may have. Let me get my, we want to smooth, we want to be working on a smooth surface here and let me flip to this side. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna just hit that fabric side, like I was saying, to smooth out any wrinkles. And you wanna get the edges and corners really well, because if, if it tugs on a corner or an edge, it's going to most likely jam up your printer. All right, so now I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing and we're just rubbing our iron over our freezer paper side. Same thing, just getting those edges and corners really well. And we want our iron set on no steam I don't know how your irons are, but you want to make sure it's set on no steam. And if it, um, you want it set on a medium setting. Okay, also. So medium setting with no steam is the best setting for your iron. Okay, we're ready to go run this through our printer. Okay, here is my printer. It's just a regular inkjet printer. Okay, here's my paper tray right here. All right, so with my printer, you have to kind of test your printer out to see how it prints, but I think most printers, whatever side you put in your paper tray, whatever side that's facing down, that's the side it's going to print on because it kind of runs through and then flips back up and comes out. So, of course, we want... Um, our fabric side to be down because we want our image to print on our fabric and not our freezer paper. So I've got that laid in there. So you just place it in your tray, in your paper tray, and then get that closed back up. All right, so here's my image that I bought off of an Etsy store. I'm pretty sure it was from the Chocolate Rabbit. And I'll put that in the description box. I'm just going to go to print. Okay. And then over here, I think this is going to do better in portrait mode. All right. Let me see if I can. That's going to be an eight and a half by 11 size. Let's see if we can go a little bit smaller with this. Um, let's see. 
think a four by six or five by seven would really be better. Um, portrait mode. All right. Let's try that five by seven. Um, because the um. 8 by 11 might just be a tad too big for, you know, the project we're going for. But you could definitely go that size if you wanted to go that size. All right, so we're going to hit print and see what happens. And there it is, you guys. There is our cute North Pole Farms reindeer feed sign and that did really well um, by doing the five by seven and again you could definitely go that bigger size um if you want if you you know it would have pretty much taken up the entire paper and you if you wanted to make your little feed sack that big that would have been perfectly fine but this time i just wanted it a little bit smaller so we're gonna go with this Okay guys, and once it comes out of the printer, you can just simply peel that freezer paper off of your fabric. It just simply peels right off, and then you are just left with your piece of fabric, just like that. We're ready to cut out our little image on our fabric. I'm going to cut I'm going to leave a little bit of room. I'm not going to cut directly on that line. I'm going to leave a little bit of fabric. Just so when we, because we're going to hot glue this. So just so that'll leave me a little bit of space there. And I may not need quite that much room, but I'll just... I'll leave that much because I can always trim off, but I can't add it back <laughs> once I cut it. Okay, so now I'm just going to hold this. We, we need a piece for the back, so I'm just going to hold this against another piece of fabric, and I'm just going to cut around it so they'll be the same size. So that's going to be the back of my little feed sack. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you can trim off the excess. All right, now we're ready to start gluing. Okay, so to glue, we're going to glue glue it where this is on the inside, and then we're going to flip it out. So this is going to be my front, so I want it facing up. And then this is going to be my back piece, just the plain piece of cloth. So I'm going to just lay it over. And right now, I'm not worried that this isn't completely flush. See how I have a little bit of excess. It's a little bit of unevenness. It's really not going to matter right now. I'm just going to go ahead and get it glued, and then I may trim off some of that and even it up before I flip it back out. Okay, so let me move this cloth. I don't want to get my, my cloth messed up. All right. So I want to start with my sides. And then I'm going to actually leave my bottom open because I want to stuff from the bottom. The reason being, I want my top, the top is going to be more visible. So I want it to be nice and, you know, have a really pretty finish. So I'm going to go ahead and do the top and the sides. But I'm going to start with the sides. And I really don't mind a frayed edge. If you do, you may want to go ahead and trim yours up. But I like the um, the frayed edge look. 
So I'm just going to, going to go with my hot glue and run around the edge, this entire edge. And then I'm going to smooth down my fabric over the top. I'm just using the edge of my scissors to help smooth that down. Okay. Now we want to be sure we leave that bottom open. Oh, and I don't want to leave it laying on my, oh man, leave it laying on my paper. I don't want to glue that together. Let me grab something. Okay, just grab me a cutting board here I can work on. All right, so now we'll move on to our top. I'm going to have to grab me a new glue stick here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put down what I've glued so far. And then I'm going to have to get me a glue stick. Okay, so let's get the rest of our top. little too much glue there, but that's all right. Okay, now our other side. Now we're just going to let this cool a minute before we start trying to turn it right side out. Just, you know, because that glue, you know, sometimes if you don't give it enough drying time, it'll try to pull apart. So I'm going to give this a little bit of drying time. That one is drying. I went ahead and did a full size print on this same image, the North Pole Farm Reindeer Feed image. And I'm going to go ahead and make a bigger one while we're at it. So while that one's cooling, I'm just going to do the same technique, cut and fit my fabric to have my back piece, and then get it glued together. Right, getting back to our smaller little feed sack, we're just going to go ahead and turn it right side out, just being gentle, not to pull on those seams too hard. Okay, that is just too cute. And just try to stick those corners out. And you know, the worst thing that could happen, you could pull apart your seam and just go back and re-glue it. And the glue sticks I have, um, you know, do say they are for fabric as well. So if you just wanna check that with your glue sticks, they do have um, fabric glue sticks but mine are for all sorts of different materials. So any glue stick should be fine. Okay, guys, now we're ready to start stuffing. See our little 
reindeer feed sack so far. That is just too cute. So now we're ready to start stuffing our feed sack. So to do that, you can use cotton filler, but it would be more like a pillow, but if that's what you wanted, then you could just go for that. Um, I'm going to be using, this is decorative shred. It's sort of like um, gift bag filler and things like that. It's just like crumpled up pieces of paper. So I'm going to be using this, and also to give it some weight, we're going to be using dried beans and I just went ahead and got me a big old eight pound bag of this from my local Walmart I think it was like six dollars and something for eight pounds of pinto beans so that's really cheap I'm gonna be able to make lots of feed sacks with these beans so very inexpensive you can also use rice and you can use any dried beans it does not have to be pinto beans it's just um it'll just give it some weight because this is a feed sack so we want it to like sit up and i was also going to mix this with some cotton and like put this and some cotton let me grab that okay i've got my cotton here i just had an old pillow that was torn and i'm just going to be getting some of the stuffing out of it and I'm not going to use a lot I just wanted to um, use a little bit to help fill it where I wouldn't have to use like so much decorative shred because I'm kind of running low <laughs> and I'm really wanting to get a few of these little feed sacks done today and we don't want it super full because like see kind of how that is because a feed sack is like, you know, it's not full and fluffy like a pillow. It's, um, you know, we could have some of our feed that was almost gone out of our feed sack. So we don't want like a full, stuffy, pillow-like feed sack. So we, we do want it kind of loose. But again, you can go, you know, kind of for the look you're trying to get. I'm going to do just a little more decorative shred. And now I'm going to put those beans in there. And we want to be able to glue, you know, our feed sack back together at the bottom. We want to be able to, you know, not have too much stuff in there. And when I feel that, it feels nice. It feels um, a little bit heavy. It's like a little feed sack. And I am just loving these so much. And I think they're so cute for the holidays or any season. You're going to be seeing me um, make these um, throughout any season. We're going to make cute little fall ones when we're getting ready for fall. And we're going to make cute little farmhouse ones. So now, when we get ready to sew our bottom seam... I want to, you know, do the, try to do the insides because I don't really want my edges together like that. Now, that would have really been cute for the top if I'd have done, I don't know, guys. I might try it the other way next time where I can have the top to look like this because, you know, that looks like a feed sack sewn together. And then the bottom could be more like this more of the tucked in look but it's fine i'll just go ahead and it's going to be sitting on its bottom anyway so you're not really going to see that a lot you know it's going to be sitting up in your little decorations and vignettes so i'm just going to put a strip of glue right along the edge I may just kind of fold it over, guys. So, all right, I think I'm going to do a little section at the time. 
All right, guys, and there it is. Our camera cut off when I was getting the bottom glued, but I just tucked it in and I just did a little section at a time and then closed it together, and then I would do another little section and then pinch that together. And then when I got to my ends, I just kind of tucked them in and then held them down to press that hot glue. But I love how these turned out. I think they're so cute. It'll be cute just sitting up in a little decoration. You can just sit them in a little bowl or a tray and you can hear the little beans inside. And when you mash them, it's just a little bit of stuffy, but then you've also got the texture in there from your beans and your paper shred. So it's the perfect little feed sack. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do our full size one the same way, and then this project will be complete. Mm -hmm. it for today's video guys I hope that you enjoyed this I hope you enjoyed those little feed sacks and even though we did them a Christmas theme you can also do them farmhouse theme fall theme spring bunnies I mean just whatever the possibilities are endless you can make different sizes I just love them so much I think they're so cute and just the cutest little decor addition anywhere in your home. Don't forget, you can hop over to my Facebook page, The Cutest Little Thing, and there you can find all of my upcycled items listed and available for sale. I also ship, so you can contact me through that page and purchase your favorites, and I will get them on their way to your front porch. 
And as always, I just appreciate you guys so much, your support of my channel. And I hope that if you like this video, you will give me a like and even share it with a friend who you think will like it too. And don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you next video.